Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode over 200 of the Speared Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and my U2's figure drops July 31 at 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. Australians, I believe that's very early in the morning. Now, do not sleep on these. Uh, they're going to go fucking fast. I've had all these all these uh, collectors. I didn't know there were fucking U2's collectors accounts They've got fucking Instagram pages where all they post is buying plastic toys. Now, I would say that that's fucking pathetic, but you've seen my shelf. I, I really, that's my best life. I wish I was that. So uh, they're going to go quick. Collectors are saying that they really like the figure and they think it's going to be limited quality. So like some people like buying two uh, or three. Now, there's nothing that I can do about that. All these people that want to, you know, collect and or maybe resell. So because it's, I don't obviously don't run U2s, but I really recommend setting an alarm and uh, getting it fucking fast. U2s.com, it's not anywhere on my website. I will never be selling these, um, and they're very limited, and I don't control how many are made or uh, what happens after they're sold out, but I'm told that they do not do restock. So U2s.com, July 31, 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern Standard Time. Figure that the fuck out. I'm not Google. I don't even know what time that is in Australia because... Um, I don't know, all right? So, uh, that's cool. That's coming out, and uh, I am stoked uh, for the figure to be around because I think it's it's so, so cool. All right, now, um, dude, I'm recording this on Sunday, and uh, this, was, this probably would have been out uh, a few hours ago, but I came in here, and I'm like, I'm going to do a podcast, and, uh, guys, I think I might have ADHD because I sat down in my chair and then I just scrolled through my phone for like an hour and then I had a 40-minute phone call with Luke and uh, now we're here. And let's be honest, right, uh, I am going to be doing the podcast because of my own actions on an empty stomach and, as always, you will pay the price because that's how this works, you know. I will say, though, it's going to be a lot more positive than last week. Last week, my neck was in pain, you know. We all know that Strong Neck Spears uh, has been a regular feature on this show and generally, I have one of the strongest necks in the game. You know, whenever I start hitting the gym, uh, lifting weights, you know, do my shoulders get bigger? Kinda, right? My chest gets a little bit bigger, whatever. You can't really tell unless I take my shirt off. My arms, I mean, yeah, there's the pythons. Those are huge, but they don't start coming in straight away. What really happens when I go to the gym is I get a fucking strong neck. That's always the first compliment I get. And it's happened multiple times, which really makes me feel uh, like I shouldn't be going to the gym at all because no one's goal is ever to hit the gym to get a strong-looking neck. It's just, it's like, that's maybe something that comes with going to the gym, but it's never the reason to go to the gym, is it, ladies and gentlemen? It's just not. You know, like I had some cunt when I was going to gym real hard. Obviously, that's all fallen off because of COVID. But when I was going to the gym hard, right, for like three months and after you, after three months, you start getting compliments from people who don't know you that well, right? It's like after the first month, people who know you will say something if you've been doing it properly. The second month, it's still really only people who know you and then the third month, if you've been doing it properly for three months, whatever your goal is, if you're a fat cunt, you want to lose it. If you're a skinny cunt, you want to get big. Whatever your goal is, month three, if you've been doing it properly, that's when, you, when you're going to get compliments or not even compliments, just, oh, you've been, oh, you've been going to the gym. Just a little bit of an, uh, oh, you've been going to the gym, haven't you? And then you go, fuck yeah, I have. I've been going to the fucking gym. And month three... I remember it. This is when I was working back at radio. I'm talking to, who who's, who was it? It was like uh, one of the managers, like not strictly my boss, but we were doing an air check and that's where they like listen to a break and they go over feedback. What could you have done better? Maybe you shouldn't have said that. Should you have thrown the callers here? All that, right? And and we're talking and we'd, be, we'd been talking for about 10 minutes and he looks at me and he goes, man, have you been going to the gym? And I was like, yeah. I have. He goes, yeah, you, your neck looks really, really strong. I was like, for, for, <laughs> that 
that's not the compliment you want, is it? But that's the compliment that I get. And that's like the third time that it's happened. So for whatever reason, when I start lifting, my neck starts getting huge, okay? So it's Strong Neck Spears. However, uh, Strong Neck Spears has uh, has been on hiatus for a very long time. I fucked my neck. It was in terrible pain last week. This week, almost better. I'm getting there. I'm in like week three or four of physio. And dude, physios is is one of those. There's like there's there are very very rarely do you have like a medical profession where they do something and then straight away you just see the 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 result of that. You know what I mean? Like if you got cancer and you go to a doctor, you might get better in nine months or you might just die. Right, you no one you don't you don't go into oh yeah you got cancer I'll fix that up with a massage you know that doesn't happen there's a lot of people that say they can do that like what was that bitch that said she beaten cancer but then she turns out she never had it and she started up some fucking app thing oh I beat cancer using health and natural remedies then all these cunts downloaded an app I think I'm remembering this correctly there was definitely that woman who scammed in Australia a bunch of people into one thinking she had cancer two thinking that she had beaten cancer three thinking she'd done it without any traditional medicine and then four tricking other cancer patients into paying and buying things that say that she that, that would teach them how to do it. So basically, it's probably the most evil thing that you could do. You know, lying about cancer for attention. Bad enough, right? Now all you need to do is jump on Instagram, post your tits and start an OnlyFans. That's like, that's, I think, now I'm going to, uh, now I was, fuck this story, okay? It's time to go on one of my world famous tangents. I think a lot of these girls on OnlyFans need to be investigated by the ACCC, Right? The consumer watchdogs need to take a look at some of these girls with OnlyFans accounts because I'm noticing a trend, right? I am noticing a fucking trend of all of these bikini models on Instagram starting up an OnlyFans and heavily implying that they post nudes on there, but all they do is post more bikini pictures, okay? I think that consumer watchdogs need to do a crackdown on OnlyFans girls because they're not posting their pussy and they're not making that clear. If I get your OnlyFans, I want to see some pussy lips. I don't want to see you in the bikini. I want to see pussy lips. (laughs) And if you are misleading your audience into thinking that you're posting nudes on OnlyFans, can I just say shame on you? That's not on. You are taking advantage of the horny. And there is no lower act. Because I would say that pe- that people that are incredibly horny, because no one signs up to an OnlyFans account after a wank, do they? No. A-, a lot of these dudes out there that are signing up to OnlyFans accounts that don't have any pussy in them, what they should have done is they should have had a wank first because no one with post-nut syndrome is signing up to an OnlyFans account that has no pussy in it. I'm sorry, it's not being done. Only incredibly horny men, right, terminally horny dudes are signing up to an OnlyFans, tricking themselves into thinking they're about to see a nipple, when really all they're going to get is some bitch who's not even going to wear a G-string on there, just some YouTuber girlfriend posting photos of her wearing a tank top, you know? And it's not on. I think you're scamming the horny. There's only one thing worse than scamming cancer patients, and that's scamming the horny. I'm sorry, someone had to say it, you know? You wouldn't take advantage of someone with Down syndrome, would you? No, that'd be wrong. Now, I'm here to tell you as a male that sometimes, you know, if you've got horny brain, you might as well have two chromosomes. That's how it works, you know? Your risk assessment and judgment is way off. That's why you never know if you really like a girl until you've had a wank. And then five minutes after that wank, then you can be like, you know what? I do like talking to her. (laughs) Because sometimes, you know, back when I was single, you'd be talking, man, this girl's amazing. I love talking to her. You have a wank and you're like, you know what? Her stories suck. 
Her stories are boring and they don't have good conclusions. And I've come to that conclusion because I had a nut. Whereas if I was horny, I'd be like, dude, this, this chick's stories are awesome. Someone needs to write this down. And I think that that's what's going on with OnlyFans is a lot of these girls are taking advantage of the terminally horny. And that's not on. And consumer watchdogs need to get involved. I think that what should happen if I was in charge of the ACCC, or maybe it's the ACCC, I can't remember how many fucking C's there are. It could be three, it could be two. As long as they're not K's, I'm not fussed, right? It's the Australian consumer cunt cunt. What does it stand for? The ACCC. Is it even the ACCC? Australian Competition and Consumer Commission nailed it. Now, what it should be is it should be um, <laughs> it should be the Australian. What is it actually? A triple C. Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. It should be the Australian Cum Conservatorship Commission. Right? And and what they do is they, they do conservat they could they do conservative work for men who haven't come yet. Alright? That's my new business. It's protecting dudes who have horny brain. Some of the most vulnerable people in today's society are dudes who haven't had a wank for four or five days. We're getting taken advantage of and I'm gonna head up the commission. Because all of these girls with OnlyFans accounts Heavily implying that if I pay your $35 a month, I'm going to see some pussy lips when all I'm going to see is you on a beach. I could have seen that on Facebook, Susan. You're trying to scam me because I haven't nutted for five days and it's not on. It's not on. All right. I think if I was in charge of the ACCC, I would, in, I would, I would force OnlyFans to, as part of their sign-up service, before you can pay, before you can enter any type of credit card details or PayPal information, it has a little check mark box. First, you've got your terms and commission, ter terms and terms and conditions, right? Scroll past it, hit I agree. We don't read them. We know that, okay? But then there is a box, a second box, and that says, are you 18 or older? Obviously, okay? But then there is a third box, and that box says... Have you nutted? And if you hit no, it takes you straight to Pornhub. It doesn't take you off the website. It opens Pornhub in a new window. Right? And, and you can only go back to the OnlyFans once you've watched any video for more than like three minutes. Because let's be real, anyone signing up to an OnlyFans, if they were to have a wank, they're not making it past the first minute. Because they they haven't done it for long enough, you know? It's been too long, is what I meant to say. They've got horny brain, and the only way to fix that is with a checkbox. And if you check no, I haven't had a wank in the last three or four days, takes you straight to Pornhub. Now, of course... Like any other business, I'm going to be logging those clicks, saving that information for my own records, right? Not to advertise to you, of course not. Blackmail, you know? It's going to be blackmail because if, you, if you're going on there and you're looking at stuff, that's, that's why it's called blackmail because if you go on there and you click on something that has, that has a few too many blackmails in it, guess what? You're getting blackmailed over the blackmails. You know, excuse me, a little pop-up comes up. Excuse me, do you want everyone in the world to know about this? If not, PayPal me $70. Boom, I get $70. They can't afford the OnlyFans girls and they've had a nut. They don't even want to pay for it. The whole world wins, especially me. Now, I'm not saying that this was going to be an ethical business. 100% ethical anyway. I'm saying that this is how I run my business. Do you know how much money, I always think about this, how much money I could make if I had no morals? Do you ever think about that? Like how good would it be if you just were a, a bad person and you didn't, like if I do, all, all the time if I do something bad, I feel bad. 
But how good would it be if you did something bad and you felt nothing? Do you ever want to be that, a sociopath, just for a couple of months, just to sort out some shit? You know what I mean? Just to sort out, just to get a few things, just to organize your, your finances, sort out your life, and then you can go back to being a good person and you don't even remember all the shit that you did. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to charge that, that much money for shipping. And then I make it cheaper because I don't want to fuck you, the consumer. But could you imagine if I was one of those businesses that were just like, yeah, it cost me $30 to send you a t-shirt. Of course it does. You don't know. I wrap it in fucking crate paper. It cost me 30 bucks, bro. You got to pay that shit. Or just being like, oh, it's, it's free shipping for the t-shirt. But you know, of course the t-shirt does cost a hundred dollars, but the shipping's free. I was one of those businesses. I don't know. I think that you truly do better. It takes longer, but you do better if you're more genuine. It's why I don't like clickbait and shit. It's why I don't fuck people on prices. It's why I uh, put so much effort into making the merch as the, the best quality I can at like a good price point. It's like, yeah, short term, I may, might make less money. But long term, I feel like it's just like it's just the right thing to do and people appreciate that. People want genuine in this world. How do we get here from me talking about uh, reporting OnlyFans whores to the ACCC? Now, I don't want to hear nothing about all these fucking, oh, you're punching down on sex workers. Cunt, if I see that one more time on Twitter, oh, how could you... Punch down on sex. You're not a sex worker. You're posting bikini pictures for money and you're making millions. You're in the 1%. You're doing better than me. I'm being oppressed. You're taking advantage of my horny brain so you can post not your pussy lips. You're the bad guy. I'm going to dunk on you on Twitter. I've never paid for an OnlyFans. I've, ne I've never done it. But I know that there are some people listening to this that have when they had horny brain. You can't tell me that people are having a wank and then signing up for an OnlyFans. It's never happened. It can't happen. I'm as sure about that as I am about my lefts and my rights, which is 95%. But if I look in a mirror, I'm going to get confused, you know? <sighs> and guys, with that, it's the perfect time to say that today... As I'm recording this, and if you're listening to this on a Sunday, I think I'm going to hit a half a million subscribers on YouTube. How fucking cool is that? Half a million. That's fucking awesome, dude. I'm like a big YouTuber now. That's a that's like properly big, big. That's fucking crazy. We've been hitting 20,000 subscriber months for like, the past three, three to five months now. It's fucking awesome. It's so cool. And, and man, it, it really goes, it's, it's like a lot of this goes to you guys sharing my shit. I see my shit getting shared by other people so often now. I feel like the movement's really spreading. This real comedy shit, people really, really want it. People really want this stuff. They're sick of being told how to think. You know, I was so happy with how that bi-monthly bull went, the reception to it, my little longer piece on the fucking Chaz Chop Zone, just making fun of like all sides without going, this is what you must think. Is like, I feel, is, I feel so fucking satisfied making that stuff and it's awesome seeing people get around it. Like, or like a lot of, a lot of this, um, this growth is from my backlog going nuts too. Like the Marxism conference going crazy, that me hoaxing rebel media going nuts, the vaccine one going crazy as well. Uh, and then all of the Spears versus America clips. It's so fucking cool to see people finding a guy that just makes fun of everything, makes fun of both sides without going, you must think this way or you're a bad person. It's fucking so cool. I knew people would want this. And it, and it really goes out to you guys for sharing it around, for finding it and going, man, this is great. Watch it. Um, that's, that, is, that really, really is how we grow, you know? So I, uh, I really appreciate it. And 
half a million is is such a big number, and I I just feel like I'm I'm as as terrible as this COVID shit means that I can't do shows for you guys. I can't meet you and interact with you in real life. I I really feel like uh, we're getting as much of it as we can, uh, as much of the community as we can online. And I cannot wait till shows come back to fucking really celebrate this shit with you guys whenever that happens. Um, and then and then also all the international people, like the America base is growing, growing like crazy, which is so cool because that's, you know, that's the vision, that's the direction, that's the goal that I'm headed in. And that's what I've made so clear since like I started, which is like, you know, conquer Australia and then it, America's the goal. And then, uh, you know, it's uh, it's really really cool, and I'm so grateful. Like, even just being able to pay rent with this shit. If this is it, if this is as big as it gets, that's amazing. Like, obviously, my I'm shooting for the fucking stars. But if I land here and this is it, and it just stays at this level, that's amazing. I'm paying rent with dick jokes. That's the fucking dream. So thank you so much to everyone who's been supporting and especially to all the Patreon people, all the people who've been getting merch recently. It's like, it, it's when, when, when all the shows got canceled, I had this real moment of like, oh no, it's over. I'm fucked. Um, but uh, you guys have really stepped up and uh, shown the support and we're building this fucking awesome community. The Discord's amazing and uh, I'm really, really grateful. I have no idea what the fuck I'm going to do for a 500,000 video uh, because I can't like, not like normally I do like a, a show or, or like a, maybe I do like an outside thing, but it's just impossible obviously and not safe. So uh, I think I might just, I don't know, Monday or Tuesday, just turn on the camera and talk. Um, but I'm so, so truly, truly grateful. And thank you very much. 500,000, half a million. That's amazing. That trips me out even thinking that. How many of those people, half a million people, is such a big number? How many of them do you think are dead? <laughs> How many of those people since subscribing have since died? It's got to be... There has to be some kind of, um, that's what I would like, a calculator that you can plug in your subscriber rate, your number, and it estimates, right, it filters out the bots. So, so I've got half a million. Let's say, let's say 20,000 of those are fake accounts, bots. I mean, that's, that's a bit high. Actually, YouTube just deleted a bunch. Let's say a few thousand of those are bots, right? I think that's reasonable. 20,000 is pretty crazy. Let's say 2,000 of them are robots. Uh, and then let's say another 2,000 of them are like uh, old accounts that people don't use anymore. Because, you know, I've got like a few YouTube accounts or whatever that you just don't use anymore for whatever reason. So let's say, let's say, let's go like 5,000 of those are like robots, du dupe accounts, whatever. So I've got 495,000 people. How many of those have died. It's like, I mean, how would you work that out? You would have to do like whatever the population is and how many people die every year. And then you go, you make that number, my number. It's like that thing of like, if there was a hundred people in the world, fucking 97 of them would be Chinese or whatever that fucking thing. It's got to be, fuck, it's got to be like, it's got to be big, right? It's got to be like at least 10,000, right? That's not that, it could be even more. I mean, we're just talking like hit by a bus, fucking, uh, old, I don't think there'd be that many old ages. I don't think too many like people in their 90s are subscribing to me and then passing away. I don't think that's happening. I think that it's got, to, it's got to mostly be accidental death. So how many of my fans have like tripped and fallen on a hacksaw at work? It's got to be a few thousand, you know? <laughs> 
And to all of those people, your sacrifice is noted and I'm going to carry on your spirit, you know. While you might not be giving me any views or money on paper, you might be useless. But in here, in my soul, your spirit will live on. <laughs> I, always, um, I always think about that ever since I watched like that, that PewDiePie video. I think it was when he hit like a, a billion. What is he? Is he at a billion subscribers? He's not at a billion, is he? Or whatever hit. 100 million. He's not at a billion. That'd be like one seventh of the fucking planet. So I'm just plugging my laptop in here. There we go. He goes, what is it? Is that 100 million, isn't it? Yeah, it's 100 million. PewDiePie subscribers. What's he at? Yes, 100 million. 105 million. That's fucking insane. Is when I was watching that video and he goes, oh, yeah, thanks so much to all the people, all the fans. You've, been, you've, been grow, you've grown up with me. You've watched me grow and... A lot of you guys are dead. <laughs> so I was like, oh, fuck, that's true. I wonder how many of mine have gone on to the other realm. That's all right. And if you listen to this and you are dead, I love you. Support me on Patreon from the grave. Now, guys, another thing, right? Speaking about supernatural powers. I'm psychic. I'm clairvoyant. Some, might, some people might say that I've been paying attention to doctors or other countries or trends about this coronavirus shit. I would like to say that I'm psychic. And, and I have a proven track record on this podcast of calling it, of saying I told you so, and calling the next thing. Now, what did I say last week? What did I fucking say last week? I said Sydney's going into lockdown next. And they need to make masks mandatory. Now, what happened today? Masks in Melbourne, mandatory. Sydney, they're talking about lockdown already. I am clairvoyant. Wouldn't that be great if instead of scientists, I think honestly, scientists would probably be believed more if they didn't say they're say their predictions were based on science and just said, ah, oh, I reckon this is going to happen because that's what I've been doing and everyone believes me and I've been pretty much right the whole time and I got no PhD. Do you realize how fucking scary that is? Cunts listen to me. I feel like there are some people in this world that actually listen to me more than they listen to scientists and I have to say that that is because, right, now, firstly, don't do that. Never listen to me over a scientist or me over... Let, don't listen to me. If I'm telling jokes, you're allowed to laugh. But other than that, I'm not that smart. In fact, I would say that I'm kind of dumb. But I bluff my way through life with confidence. Because that's my job, is, is being funny and working on my charisma skill. If this was Skyrim 1... I would have robbed all you cunts blind, crouching on the ground, and you guys wouldn't see it because my sneak skill would be through the fucking roof. And you'd have no idea. You would come to my show, we get a photo, and to you, halfway through the photo, I just would have disappeared. To me, the only thing that's happened is I've crouched, and now you can't see me. And I would have gone through your pockets. Every cunt coming to my show would leave with nothing, with empty pockets. I'd rob you all blind. And if you caught me and you said, hey, give that back, you know what I would do? F9, baby. I just fucking load into the game to the, to the point where before you fucking saw me and then I'd do it again. And if you caught me, guess what? F9. Back into the new game, a few minutes into the past. Get it again, rob ya, you didn't notice, bam, on to the next cunt. But this isn't Skyrim, so I'm not going to rob you at my shows. I'm just going to give you a night of entertainment and a photo and a brief, pleasant conversation. Because I appreciate you guys, and this is not Skyrim. But if it were, just know, you'd be robbed blind and I'd fusro die your fucking ass. 
Can you believe that it's 2020 and I'm making these references? What is this? Fucking Reddit? What am I saying? Oh, yeah. I'm saying the reason why there is so much disinformation out there is because scientists should not be the ones informing us. Now, let me clarify this statement. That sounds insane, but I'm going to clarify it. We shouldn't be listening to scientists. Now, what I mean by that is if you take a scientist and try to make him speak to the public, no one's going to believe the cunt because he's a fucking nerd who can't talk to women, let alone inform the public. That's why he's a scientist. They can't talk to girls. How the fuck are they going to convince the public that they're correct? Have you seen someone who likes science? They can't make eye contact. How are they going to convince mum and dad they should wear a mask? They can't even fuck a girl. We shouldn't be listening to scientists. We should be letting those cunts do science and then letting other people tell other people about that science. Scientists should be in their fucking lab, not informing people. They should be informing people who inform people. And that's wh- uh, that's the biggest reason. That's why cunts listen to me instead of scientists. That shouldn't be happening. I don't know what I'm saying. But I am more charismatic than a scientist. And that's the fucking problem. That's why whenever... Someone posts, must work. Six other cunts go, no, they don't. I've got an infographic. And and the, their infographic looks like those fucking Gen Z memes that are just like baked. Like you could put, you could probably put an image of SpongeBob screaming on the infographic and it would look better. And the reason why they believe the scientist is wrong is because they were told by someone who has more charisma, charisma than, the, than the scientist. And that's just the world, you know? (laughs) We need scientists to stay in their fucking lab and we need a new division of, of people who can fuck girls to inform the public. Now, Dr. Fauci... He seems to be one of those one of those rare scientists that has fucked a girl. I'll let him slide. <laughs> it's just it's just, it is just um funny watching all of these scientists do press conferences and they're talking to the public like they would to another scientist. Like all these fucking like the World Health Organization and and all these other fucking organizations that are run by doctors, they just don't know how to talk to a normal fucking person. Like, it's like when I was like, okay, they need to bring in masks. And then I was thinking, when they do that, everyone's going to go, oh, they don't even work. In fact, they're harmful. And that's because way back when, the WHO and all these other fucking Australian government did it too, they went, they said these words, which is just, True, but the worst way to say it, right? People were going, oh, COVID's happening. Should we wear a mask? And their answer to that was, masks are not recommended. Or we do not recommend masks. Now, a lot of people interpret that, and they're not even that wrong. A lot of people read that and they go, oh, they don't recommend masks. That means they are recommending that we should not wear a mask. Whereas what they're actually saying is, at the moment, uh, we're not saying you should wear a mask. That doesn't mean they're saying you should not wear a mask. They're just not saying you should wear a mask. Do you know what I mean? Does this make sense? It's like a lot of people interpreted that sentence to mean do not wear a mask or we recommend not wearing a mask is probably better. 
uh, what they probably should have said was, uh, masks aren't harmful. Or they should have gone, maybe they should have gone, we don't think masks are necessary yet. Right? Rather than going, we do not recommend masks. See how that sentence sounds so different to like the, like, you know, it's, it's not that crazy. Not many people have the best reading comprehension in the world. Or people just skim over shit. Like, I feel like these scientists don't know how to talk to normal cunts. All these politicians don't know how to talk to normal people because they've been sitting there fucking ivory palace for too fucking long. They don't know what a normal cunt is. So they say these things and they go, we do not recommend masks. In a lot of brains, that's going to come out as, oh, they're not recommending them yet. But in a lot of other people, and it's not that crazy to think, I don't think they're wrong for thinking that's what they're saying. A lot of other people are going to go, oh, uh, they're saying uh, they, they actually recommend to not wear a mask rather than th what they're actually saying, at least in my interpretation, is I think they were saying, we don't think they're necessary yet. Or maybe they weren't saying that. And uh, guys, I think that this is boring. I'm bored. <laughs> Moving on. It's time to defund Australia Post, guys. It's, it's time. It's time to defund Australia Post. Okay? You know, I've, I've, been, going, I've been going on a pretty pro-government, you know, in Australia. I don't know what the fuck's happening in America. Cunts jumping out in unmarked vans and kidnapping people. Hey, for any reason, let's not. Huh? For it doesn't matter what anyone's doing. Let's have the police say, hi, I'm the policeman and I'm going to arrest you because you're committing a crime. And then that person goes, what crime? And the policeman goes, oh, this one. And they go, oh, you got me. Let's, let's keep that going rather than guys running up in fucking black vans, loading people into them while people scream, are you police or are you kidnappers? And then they ignore you. Let's not do that, guys. I don't, know, I don't know too much about American politics, but I'm feeling like that's a not a good idea. Anyway, right? I've been pretty pro what the government's been doing at the moment, but I'm now going to go on a, uh, <clears throat> on uh, what do they call it? What are those cunts called? What's that, uh, what's that other system that doesn't, that definitely doesn't work? In real life, it's not the not communism, right? I, not, not that one. There's a few, there's a few belief systems that sound cool on paper and on Reddit, but if you did them in real life, everyone would just die. So uh, the number one, obviously, communism, right? It just it just doesn't work. We've tried it many times, many different times. I don't think there is uh, real communism. I just think that uh, people are real corrupt, including capitalism. I just think that capitalism, right, a hybrid of capitalism and socialism is the best we're ever going to get. That's the system where there will be corruption, but it's manageable. Do you know what I mean? Communism, you have corruption, and then cunts just die, right? So there's the communism, there's anarchism, obviously. That one just does, that's just never going to work. On a, I'm talking large scale, small scale seems to actually work. Large, countrywide. What's the other one? The fucking, it's not liberal. It's the other L word, libertarian, where there's like just no, no government. Government does like, basically government just does admin, I think is, is the idea. It's like, oh, they just do admin and paperwork. There's no tax. You can't tell me what to do. Um... But maybe there'll be police, but probably not. And uh, we all just get along. That's that. Uh, that's that one, right? So now this is where I'm going on that full fucking. Uh, I've already forgotten the word. What is it? This is why you should never ever listen to me, guys, because I will literally state an opinion and I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying. Never listen to me. I'm a comedian. I sit down for an hour talking to myself, screaming about Australia Post and COVID-19. I haven't left the house for three months. I've gone insane. Nothing I say is true. It's all either jokes or uh, dumb shit on purpose to entertain people. 
never listen to me. That being said, wear a mask. <laughs> um, what I'm saying is, guys, is Australia Post needs to be defunded. You know, I've never been, a, I've never been for defunding governmental uh, organisations in Australia, but Australia Post, you've had your time, you've had your chances, and it's over. Even the fucking train system is better than Australia Post. And the train system is fucked. Australia Post, it's it's time to it's time to stop. Okay, uh, I I do all my shipping, I do all my merch myself because I love the control that it gives me, and I love the the quality control that I can do with my merch because there's so many print on demand fucking bullshit out there that you pay heaps of money and your fans get fucked, and so do you. So I do it myself, right? Because I like that. Uh, now. That means I do my shipping myself. Now, I used to use Australia Post and I used to think that, oh, it's Australia, it's run by the government, must be the cheapest because profit isn't necessarily uh, their main goal. Uh, wrong, okay? Australia Post is fucked. Those cunts were charging me like $20 to ship something overseas. I switched providers. Now I can charge you guys like six bucks if you're overseas. And it gets there faster than Australia Post. But that's boring. That's not my main complaint. My main complaint is that Australia Post seems to be diversifying their business in a way that I don't like. They're moving from posting and handling and shipping and sometimes cashing checks for old people who can't work out a smartphone, right? That's fine. They can do that business. Hey, sometimes they even sell batteries for $30. That's fine. All right. I'll never buy one, but that's fine. Sometimes you walk into a post office and they have toys there that have been sitting in the sun for a decade and they're yellow. Now, I, I'm not here to tell them how to run that side of their business. It seems like they should probably never sell toys because they're, they're a fucking post office. I don't think any cunts walking in there going, oh, I'll get a toy while I'm here. Not even I'm doing that. Okay. And I love plastic bullshit. U2s.com, July 31, 3 p.m. US Eastern Standard Time. All right. Australia Post has opened up a new wing of their business and I'm not happy about it. They've moved into demolition and it's not good, okay? I've completely quarantined my business and my shipping from Australia Post because they're terrible, they got bad customer service and it takes ages to get my shit to you cunts, all right? Which is the worst. So often I'd be like, oh, I didn't get my fucking thing. And then, you know, a week later, oh, I'm sorry, I got it. And it's Australia Post's fault, Okay. However, the one thing that I needed to get from Australia Post last week was poster tubes to send you cunts posters, right? Because miraculously, somehow, they undercut the other guys I was using. So I was like, all right, I'm going with Australia Post. It really hurts me to do this, but I'm going back to those cunts. I order 100 poster tubes because you guys have been running it up on loosebeers.com. Thank you very much. Two is a cancelled. You know? You guys came in. It's good. However, it meant that I needed to buy tubes from Australia Post. That's bad. Because I would like Australia Post to crumble. What about Australian jobs? I think we can all agree that's a sacrifice that we as a country are willing to, to make. Because how many times have you walked into the post office, looked at an Australian worker and gone, hello, I'm a customer and I would like you to do the thing that you're employed to do. And then they look at you and they go, hi, I work for Australia Post. Suck my dick. And they spit in your face. The most disrespectful cunts I've ever interacted with in any industry ever is always Australia Post employees. One time I walked into an Australia Post office with six things. That is not an absurd amount of things. This is years back. Six things. I'm stoked. Oh my God, I get to send a t-shirt to Sweden. How cool is that? That's amazing. Six things. I walk in, I look at the woman, I go, I would like to post these things. Big smile, being nice. She looks at me and she goes, do you really want to do that here? 
I don't know, bitch. Does it say post on the outside of your fucking store? I think it does. What else would I be doing here? Being the country Australia? Because that seems to be the only other fucking thing you do. Australia, post. You only seem to do two things. I would like to post from Australia. Do your job, you mole. Anyway, but that's a separate issue. I order these tubes. Standard Australia post fucking... Why is it that if I buy, if I buy one pen from Officeworks... One silver pen for $6 from Officeworks, it arrives the next day. But if I buy 100 fucking tubes from Australia Post, whose only business is posting, it takes two weeks. They were all in stock. It was coming from the city, Melbourne. Why is their business that bad? I'll tell you why, because it's run by moles who hate their job. Okay? Officeworks is posting better than Australia Post. Next thing you know, Australia Post is going to be selling paper better than Officeworks. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. My tubes arrive. Australia Post come. Guy in a van rolls up, comes through my driveway. Drops them off. I'm sitting there, I'm having breakfast, I'm watching him. He drops my shit off. I'm like, oh, cool, my tubes are here. Great. He reverses. Now, can I just say, he's driving a van, not a truck. I got a massive, fucking huge driveway. Not because I'm rich, but because for some reason in Frankston, they were like, oi, should we build a house that fits the plot of land? Or should we get a massive plot of land and then build a cottage? And then they were like, nah, fuck the cottage, build a shed and we'll make the rest of it grass. That's where I live, right? Pulls down my driveway, reverses out, hits the brick wall. I'm like, oh, that's going to leave a mark on the van. I watch the guy go, oh, that's going to leave a mark on the van. He looks over, sees where he is. And then I'm like, oh, what he's going to do is he's going to drive forward, readjust, and then reverse. Instead, he goes, uh, should be right. Demolishes the entire front brick fence of my rental in front of me. It, it would have to be the most Australia Post shit ever is not only delivering my shit weeks late, but then on the way out, demolishing the house. And it's not on. We need a defund Australia Post. Completely fucked. Watch the cunt do it. Now, now I, I already see the comments. Oh, this guy's critiquing the driving. He doesn't even have his driver's license. Bro, I reckon I could have done that shit, no driver's license, with a blindfold on. That's how huge the fucking driveway was. I could have done that blindfolded, no driver's license, and as an Asian woman. It could have been done like that. Something about Australia Post just means you do your job wrong, right? So anyway, I come out, and, and because I'm me, I just think it's funny. I think it's amusing. If You know what? He's actually lucky that he did that to me and not anybody else in Frankston because... When I was coming out of my house to like get information or whatever and, and talk to him, he had this look like, oh, I'm going to die and I deserve it. He, this man's going to kill me and that is my fate and I've lived a good life and uh, it's time to go. I'm going to die because this man's going to kill me. But I was just like, hey, dude, uh, that's, that's not good, is it? That's literally what I did. I was like, oh, hey, man, that's not good, is it? And he goes, oh, thank fuck. He's reasonable. Right. So anyway, I get his information and the poor cunt. I actually feel really sorry for him. I reckon he probably got fired for it. It was his first week. Fuck, he, he just didn't know how big the van was. I'm I know I'm trashing Australia Post, but it's just a normal mistake. I don't really care. Poor bastard. Um, but the craziest thing about that is I get all his information, whatever. He comes back and he goes, oh, we're going to fix it. And I'm like, ah, it's a landlord's problem, whatever. 
Um, the wildest part about all of that is uh, the next day, right, which is shocking for Australia Post, this other guy comes back, older guy, and he goes, hey, man, I'm with a... I'm with Australia Post. I'm a delivery driver and a bricklayer. I'm here to fix the wall. These cunts are out here demolishing so many fucking walls. They employ hybrids of like uh, post delivery drivers and repairmen. Like they, if, if that's not the biggest indictment on Australia Post, I don't know what the fuck is. If you are running a postage business and you also have just like guys that are there to fix demolition work that you're doing on the side, you need to be defunded. And I think we need to do away with Australia Post. It's over. It's done. And guys, I think that's where I'm going to end it here. Thank you very much for listening. Spearhead Sundays. Um, we're going to do miscellaneous bit at the end next podcast. Uh, if you want to send in an email to the podcast, uh, send it to podcast at lewspears.com and uh, I'll read it out on the show if it's an entertaining story or you need some life advice or whatever. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much again for 500,000 subscribers. That's going to happen today and uh, I can't wait to see that number up on the screen. That's a huge, huge, massive milestone and we did this shit together, you know. I, I always think back to fucking 2012 me, uh, 2013 working in call centers, fucking hating life, just desperate, desperate, desperate to be where I am now. And while I still have that 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 same drive of like, fuck, I want to be there, I want to be there and looking forwards, it's like every now and then I think back of like, man, this, where I'm at now was the dream. And we got here together. So thank you very much. And if you don't post your pussy on OnlyFans, you need to be arrested. I'm Lewis Spears. I'll talk to you next Sunday. Have a fucking shit one. 500k, baby!